um, starting working in the built environment. Um, we um, we thought it would be a good today uh, good idea to bring together uh, three excellent speakers on on this topic, and it's uh, three people that I that I have met in uh, my role as a parking working group leader uh, at Polis. Um, the um, this parking working group works with uh, the European Parking Association, and about uh, I think yeah twenty of our members. Uh, the parking managers of our members who regular, regularly meet to discuss uh, parking issues. Um, and uh, what is very ap apparent is that the, um, the respacing discussion that started, uh, that has seen a peak uh, during COVID-19 um, and focused on uh, on-street on space, let's say, public space, uh, open air space, um, that that discussion on respacing also has uh, has started uh, many years ago on respacing buildings uh, and then specifically the mobility functions or the parking spaces uh, in buildings. Um, and the people we have on the panel have, have worked on these topics. We have uh, Martina Hertel from the uh, German Institute for uh, Urban Research, um, who has worked in the uh, the park for sump project on uh, building standards uh, parking standards in buildings and she will present the um, uh, the results of her her study uh, we have Dirk Lauers of the Ghent University who uh, has written uh, for, for a number of, of organizations in uh, in Belgium to um, redefine the parking standards to and mobility standards, so not only focusing on on vehicles parked in buildings, but actually creating spaces in buildings that can cater for different mobility purposes. And then we have Raf Ilsbrooks from the Antwerp University, um, who has done research also with with his students on the question like how do we um, can we reshape existing parking infrastructures to take new uh, urban functions? Um, and I think it's a very good good story to to move from from parking standards to actual actual mobility standards, and then at the end also thinking of of totally repurposing uh, in building uh, parking um, parking stock. So that's on the agenda for today. Uh, I will also be the the slides master for many of these <laughs> of this for at least two of the speakers. Um, so I will quickly um, uh, quickly uh, change the slides. But I first would like to uh, propose uh, to look at the polls function, uh, where you normally should see an. Uh, a poll where we ask uh, in what field you are active. We would like to know um, what kind of, uh, of sectors we have around the table. I, I might be missing some, but are we talking to parking people or to, um, to mobility people, spatial planners, people working more on, on buildings and real estate? Um, so if you could click that, I hope you, you see the poll. If you click poll, and then we can see who we have in the room. I will, in the same time, uh, change slides. I think I should be able to show results. So it's a small sample, of course, with uh, people still arriving, but uh, we have mainly uh, mobility planners in the room um, and some spatial planners. So, Raf, you have to talk to an, uh, a non-architect audience. Eh? Make sure you're, uh, you're ready for that. Eh? Um, OK, I will uh, share your slides, Martina, and then you can start your presentation. Um, and uh, I would like uh, to ask the other gentlemen to leave the stage then uh, and return when they are uh, speaking. Okay, I will also leave. Uh, just tell me when to change slides, Martina. Yes. Okay. Um, now the slides. The slide is gone on my screen. 
Um, I don't see to stay on the stage then I otherwise <laughs> uh, i didn't think of that but i i will i will be that's looking, fine looking y up. you're more than welcome to okay, stay thank you. on yeah, the stage okay. <laughs> okay so uh well i just continue um hi to everybody i hope um yeah as ibu said the lunch break was not too too heavy and you're not too tired um, my name is Martina, Martina Hertel from Deutschen Institut in, uh, für Urbanistik here in Berlin. Um, and I'm working in the uh, Department of Mobility. So I sort of belong to the mobility planning as well, but we have other aspects uh, to consider. Uh, parking standards are really uh, a hot topic, as Ivo said, especially when you look to uh, the off-street parking issues. And so parking really influenced the building, um, or the built environment. Next slide, please. Um, as, as it was said before, I'm involved in the uh, Park for Some project. It's a European project. And one of the fields uh, of activities in that project is uh, the, the topic of parking standards. Parking standards are also known as parking requirements or parking norms, and they regulate how much off-street uh, car parking space is built for new buildings. So parking will influence the building, the built environment. Parking standards were designed to instruct developers to build parking lots in correlation to the amount of parking or the size of um, uh, to, to the amount of apartments or the size of apartments or in re in correlation to the amount of new offices, uh, new shops, new restaurants. Nevertheless, the parking standards are an important uh, steering instrument for urban and transportation planning as and for mobility planning. And all the findings uh, we come up with uh, are in a brochure. We published a brochure within that pro uh, project. Um, uh, unfortunately, the um, the website park for some is still not online. Um, uh, they did have server problems. So if you're really interested, you can send me an email afterwards or an email to Evo, and we will provide uh, this uh, brochure. Uh, we are just in the, um, at the moment, we are going to translate the brochure in uh, five more languages. The German one will be published uh, throughout the summer. Um, I, I'm not aware about the other languages, but it's soon to come. Next slide, please. Why do we have parking standards? Cl click on Evo. Why do we have um, parking standards uh, in the first place? Well, parking standards were introduced to keep the streets uh, free for the floating traffic. Um, and it, they were introduced to prevent that a new location uh, generates parking problems in its neighborhood. Most countries have minimum requirements and building developers can build more if they want and as much as they want. That's part of the problem. Parking standards may induce car ownership and influence the built environment. Um, with the increase of car ownership, um, environmental problems uh, grow, grow bigger and the pressure on space, even on built up space and on um, on street space, it, it increases. So uh, car ownership is really crucial. Next slide, please. On top, parking standards are pretty expensive because you can calculate calculate about 10% of the building costs you need for providing um, the parking standards. Um, if you provide um, 
build um, car parking in in uh, on street it's not so expensive but as soon as you build like uh, parking garages you have to spend quite a big amount of money the problem is that uh, most of the time the built the building costs will be split over all uh, inhabitants and so um, of the new residential areas and um, so it, nobody looks at if the person has a car or not but they still have to sort of uh, pay in in the building cost for the uh, car parking next slide please so it's better actually to lower the minimum requirements for car parking but you can only do that if you have, first of all, alternatives for the mobility and that you have paid parking in the area around or controlled parking, um, because otherwise it won't work. So I have a, you have a picture from Freiburg where you have a mobility station, you have can have um, bicycle parking infrastructure, or you can have mobility contracts. So these are all kinds where you can actually lower and within the mobility planning um, section it really works well. Uh, not so much with real estate, uh, real estate agencies or spatial planners or building planners. Uh, they are not too happy with this minimum requirements uh, when, they are, uh, when you ask them to lower them. Next. We have uh, one. Uh, go on, yeah. Um, we have one good example in in our um, concept. One one slide back. Um, um, we have a really good example how to deal the whole uh, problem in in Umeå. Uh, Umeå is a city in the northern part of Sweden, and they actually took the advantage that they were uh, the cultural um, capital of Europe um, and they had to sort of rebuild their inner city area and what they did is they removed all the parking from the river bank um, and moved this into this uh, parking garage which you see in the middle and they created a mobility font and um, where they really had to pay in and to sort of um, yeah come up with this solution and what they actually uh, got is really nice streets for walking uh, for cycling and to um, come up with a quality of life so uh, what i wanted to say is it's really important to remove parking from on street into off street um, parking areas where it's sort of like um, good, um, yeah, where it's good located. Okay, next slide. To sum up, the whole issue is um, if the car is the closest mean of transportation to your home and it's easy to park at your at the final destination, it's usually the first choice. Um, so when you're creating um, parking space in residential areas, it leads to more parking needs in other areas, at workplaces, at shopping centers, at uh, leisure uh, facilities. So, and it will sort of influence uh, the built environment. Uh, nevertheless, the, the whole instrument or the whole tool of parking standards is an important steering instrument and uh, municipalities should not give this out of hand because it's sort of like you can make deals out of it. High requirements to build fixed parking standards affect construction and maintenance costs. I, I show you uh, the costs. Um, and so parking standards should give the op um, to lower requirements if transportation um, alternatives are available. Ideally, 
maximum car parking allowance are fixed and limit how much parking is provided in new buildings. So come up with maximum standards. That's what we're trying to achieve in this project. Um, required minimum standards for high quality bicycle pass, uh, parking facilities should be sort of part of, uh, of your SUMP. And uh, you should integrate regulations about parking standards in your SUMP. That's very important. Thanks for your intention. And Ivo, if you sort of click to the next slide, uh, you can you have my um, contact data. So if you're interested in the brochure, uh, you can send me an email. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Martina. Uh, I, I always uh, wonder to what degree um, cities take these these progressive measures themselves, or to what degree they are uh, they are part of, of national policies that are are put in place and, and national or regional changes to to the, the standards. Do you have uh, did you see differences in in Park for Sump uh, in the sixteen cities involved? Is it local initiative or or do they follow um, the it, it's um, um, there is hardly any national regulation about it. It's usually an, uh, some kind of regional. In some cases, it, it's locally uh, organized. Um, for instance, in Germany, in most uh, areas, it's locally. Um, but we have it on lender um, uh, level as well. So, and that's the case in Spain and in France and in uh, some other. Um, areas not in france and in, in spain i know and i think in belgium it's the same it's on the re re uh, regional level okay i'm looking at the chat which is currently not yet used mm -hmm. neither is the the q a but we'll uh, we'll come back in in the panel discussion uh, after the other presentations martina so thanks mm -hmm. a million and um we'll ask Dirk Lauers to um to join the stage now um and i will quickly change uh to uh, Dirk's slides, just a second. So, and then I will disappear. Dirk, you are uh, welcome to speak. Um, and uh, maybe also if you could, it's probably, it's also in your presentation, but ex address this, this topic and, and where the question came from, from Fitzberat, for instance, but I, I'll, I'll give you the floor now. Okay, thank you, Ivo, and uh, good afternoon. Also from my side, everybody. Uh, so I will deal with, uh, a new approach uh, in Flanders region, it's in Belgium, for those who are not familiar with uh, the Belgium situation, it's a region in Belgium. And I will, will show you how this paper is uh, aiming at shifting from the traditional minimum parking uh, norms towards a multi-model uh, mobility standard for building projects. So, of course, this is in line with the approach that was already also mentioned by uh, Martina. On the next slide, you see indeed a more general uh, approach that also is, uh, is, is typical for, for Flanders. So the traditional approach where uh, that was common in our cities aiming at the kind of balance between the parking demand and the parking supply. So on the next slide, you see that this approach, this uh, narrowed approach, only focusing on parking itself, uh, it, it, it led to uh, minimum parking standards. Apart from a car following uh, policy, it also had some concerns, and this was also introduced by Martina, uh, to avoid that uh, newly generated parking uh, related to uh, new building projects would be shifted towards the public domain. On the next slide, 
you see on on the contrary that uh, also in, in in Flemish cities there was an evolution during uh, uh, the past century from this uh, the demand oriented uh, parking approach uh, towards a more integrated approach integrated within the mobility management and the urban uh, planning so on the next slide you see also that and this was also introduced by martina already in general that uh, this will lead to maybe minimum but also to maximum parking standards for cars and also that the approach should be multimodal that also bicycle standards should be included and that a more broader accessibility approach has to be developed on the next slide uh, uh, you see the, the the document i uh, will refer to uh, the next uh, uh, minutes uh, so it is a, a paper that was uh, i was was co-authored by myself uh, for the fitzberat it's a knowledge center for cycling in flanders on the next slide you see that this paper is uh, dealing of course with um, an analysis of the uh, evolution of the of the policy in flanders but also on the mo more general on, on the relation between parking and mobility and also showing some new practices so in the end the conclusion of of the paper is uh, giving some uh, standards some very specific uh, standards as well for car as bike parking and for the range residential uh, projects uh, standards related also to the location and so but apart from uh, this uh, uh, provision for uh, parking it also deals with mobility services on the next slide uh, yeah, based on, on, on the general uh, relation, uh, this is a quite common figure for countries in, in, in Europe, I think, that almost 95% of the time, as well bikes as cars are parked. So it is impossible to provide all the space needed on the public domain. And so that is also uh, why that the, the paper I'm, I'm uh, now talking about this, uh, especially focusing on, on the private domain, but of course also relating to uh, street parking. Yes, the following, next one. So uh, the vision that is developed is uh, that mobility standards, that parking standards uh, should aim at uh, realizing more bicycle trips and fewer car trips and this is the official policy in in the flemish uh, region the government has adopted a target to arrive from uh, uh, a share of 70 percent of cars in the daily mobility in flanders now towards a 50 50 uh, share in the metropolitan areas in the year 2030 and in general for the rest of flanders a 60 percent maximum uh, share for cars in the daily mobility the knowledge center for fitzberat itself is aiming at uh, a growth of the share of the bicycles uh, towards 20 percent in the year 2024 so that's uh, the day after tomorrow let's say uh, now it is at uh, 14 percent so this means that we have to facilitate cycling and discourage car traffic and that this also counts of course for parking yeah on the next slide we see that there is a quite uh, uh, recent only recent attention in belgium and in flanders for uh, standards for bike parking related to the rapid growth of uh, the use of cycle cycling and uh, of bikes and also of course of the uh, ownership 
So only for the last uh, 10 years, let's say. And then uh, next slide is on the car parking. Of course, this has a longer tradition. It started uh, 100 years ago with uh, yeah, the, the fact that in Belgium, you were not allowed to park your car on street until the year 1925. It meant that uh, uh, if you had a car, uh, you had to park it on private property. So it's only from 1934 that uh, technical regulations are included in the traffic regulation, in, in the national traffic regulation. Yes, the next slide, we see that uh, uh, parking standards uh, are developed and, and uh, from 1962 on, on the national level at that time. At that time, the Ministry of uh, Spatial Planning was at national level. And so they, uh, the minister at that time uh, had an administrative letter uh, uh, obliging all uh, municipalities and all developers to adopt uh, minimum parking uh, uh, standards when uh, zoning plans were adopted or allotment permits were uh, uh, foreseen. So later on, in uh, fr from 1981 on, uh, the spatial planning competence was uh, now shifted towards the regions. And the Flemish government in the beginning adopted the same uh, standards, but from more or less the, uh, the year 2000, they abolished it. And now most mun municipalities first also just took over the former uh, national uh, guidelines, but afterwards they worked with minimum standards that are higher now than uh, the original ones. Yeah, the next slide. Um, uh, so the paper was uh, also inspired by the European Cyclist Federation document on making buildings fit for sustainable mobility. So also relating to climate goals to have less uh, uh, as it is for uh, insulation, also buildings should provide uh, 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 a climate-friendly uh, uh, transport. So that's why uh, uh, there is a, an issue there to formulate maximum uh, car parking standards and minimum uh, bike standards. Also, of course, it is important to avoid development in areas with uh, low density because they are car oriented and also to coordinate with the parking policies on public domain. Next slide, you see, we can go quick on this, that of course, the international literature on uh, high cost of free parking, for example, the uh, standard uh, of Donald uh, Shop was also taken into account. Uh, maybe relating to the fact that uh, uh, paid parking in urban areas is now uh, a general issue in, in Flanders, but not in the suburban areas. And on the next slide, you see that maybe this is a foot for thought because in the suburban areas, the cost because of the urban sprawl uh, for infrastructure is nine and a half times higher than in urban core areas. So in fact, in, in, in those areas, where the cost for the infrastructure for the cars is the most expensive parking is for free yeah next one of course there is a relation between uh, parking uh, norms the provision of parking uh, car ownership and car use so it was uh, described in literature in flanders we found out that people using either bike, either public transport, that two thirds of them don't have a car available. So uh, there are only one third really uh, uh, people that have a choice and travel by public transport and bike.
the next one the relation was uh, demonstrated by european cyclist federation for some cities in 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 europe uh, so the higher the parking standard for cars the higher the car use and the higher the standard for uh, bike parking the higher uh, share in the model split of cycling yeah next one we found it also for uh, cities in, in Flanders, uh, though less uh, pronounced. So we found the relation between the uh, model share of cycling and uh, a standard for uh, uh, bike parking. And we also found the relation between the cost for residential parking and especially the second permit and the model share for cycling. Yeah. So regarding the alternatives, uh, it was also already dealt with uh, uh, alternatives uh, like car sharing. In, in Flanders also bike sharing is very important. The two most important uh, systems are the uh, national one blue bike related to the railway stations. This is uh, uh, a back to one system and also uh, in a second one is the velo system in the city of antwerp so both systems were introduced 10 years ago in the meantime in, in antwerp this velo system uh, they produced already 40 million trips uh, in total in that period and and one of these bikes is used in average four and a half uh, times per day yeah the next uh, slide so one of the, the, the central ideas also in developing a uh, new uh, approach, a mobility approach uh, for parking is to look at the more flexible and at shared, and this means grouped parking facilities. So instead of formulating for each type of, of, of building, shopping or, or, or housing or uh, industry or, or and, and so on to to formulate area-based uh, standards that have a multiple use that can and also a flexible use that can be used in another way in the evening in the, during weekend than during uh, let's say the working hours yeah the next one if we look at the the practice now we see a large variation in uh, parking uh, uh, standards in, in Belgium. This is for mid-side towns uh, in the center. And so it is varying between 0 0.6 and 1.8 uh, places per apartment. Yes, next one. Also, uh, there is a huge variation uh, for the, the cost of uh, permits for residents. Uh, the first uh, permit is in, in many cities and in, in the two largest towns in, 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 in Flanders, Antwerp and Ghent, it's for free. Um, this, for the also second permits is in, in some of the uh, cities still for free. If you compare with, uh, for example, uh, 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 Holland with Utrecht, where you pay 343 euros for the first permit. Uh, and especially with uh, Stockholm, where uh, you have to pay more than 1,000 euros per year for a permit. Of course, uh, we see that there is a, 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 a yeah, huge uh, liberal, let's say, uh, policy. But of course, residents pay in that uh, in many places in time, looking for a place. In some areas, in in, in the major cities, the the demand is 50% uh, higher than the supply of uh, of places. So people really have to search for uh, sometimes half an hour for a place. Yeah, the next one. But of course, there are also new practices. One is uh, uh, in, in St. Nicholas, it's a mid-sized town, a, a new development for housing. And, and there, the idea is that we uh, developed with a lower standard, uh, but provided also 
uh, shared uh, uh, parking places and also lower cost for the inhabitants. Uh, so paid by the developer, also shared, uh, sorry, also uh, bike parking, of course, in a flexible way, also uh, uh, make make it uh, uh, open for residents of other uh, inhabitants in, in the street, not only for the project. And also there was a formula that people buying a house or renting a house in the project can uh, not get a parking permit for on-street uh, parking. Yeah, the next. Yeah, so the next one is then, uh, so the conclusion of the paper, so uh, providing a, a balanced multimodal accessible level. So, and, and there are some uh, ranges uh, to be fulfilled for, uh, cars and, and, and bike parking, but also uh, the, the guideline uh, will always uh, depend on the, pro the accessibility uh, profile of the area. So what about public transport uh, accessibility? What about uh, uh, shared uh, uh, mobility services? And also uh, depending on the carrying capacity of the roads also carrying capacity from an environmental point of way. What, what is the traffic that uh, uh, can be allowed uh, uh, additional traffic uh, in, 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 this, in the streets, in, in the neighborhood, and also, of course, related to the model shift uh, targets of the municipality. Yeah, next one. So here are some uh, guidelines. Uh, so, depending on uh, the size of the of the town, also depending on where the area in the town is, more in the core or more in the in the fringe, and also uh, depending on on uh, the size of the apartment. So, varying from zero uh, as a minimum uh, in in core areas in in the larger cities. Uh, and a maximum of 0 0.75, uh, uh, varying towards, uh, if you see uh, in, in the last line on the right for the smaller towns, uh, you see that then uh, it can, the parking standard for cars varies between one and two. Yes. So for uh, bike parking, uh, the standard that is proposed is to provide one uh, uh, parking space uh, for bikes per pillow that is uh, 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 asked for in the building uh, permit. And in the larger projects, there are also some guidelines for outsized bikes, for cargo bikes, e-bikes, and so on that have to be provided. Yes, next one. So the conclusion is that we have to reach a, a balanced multimodal accessibility. And the next step now will be uh, for uh, shopping and offices and schools that this is work in progress also to uh, provide some uh, 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 figures, uh, minimum and maximum standards uh, similar uh, for the housing standard. So. Next slide, you will see that is, of course, that I'm now available for the debate and later also for uh, email contact. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dirk. Uh, very interesting. I, what I think is, is uh, crucial also in your presentation is the link you make with the um, with the, the street. Eh? So you talked about uh, the, the capacity what's the, the traffic volume and a certain uh, area can take uh, but also the link with um, with permits um, and and with the actual on street capacity and the uh, the overflow there could be from building uh, from parking in buildings to the to the public uh, space and i must say we we see that from from members who are developing uh, new districts in the city with very low parking standards, so uh, sometimes even car-free housing. 
um, that they are also saying um, after they have presented the um, the the official story that they are saying that they understand this is also an uh, an uh, quite an, a, a gamble or a bet on the future. Eh? So how will uh, car ownership evolve how will attitudes evolve uh, as uh, as generations move through the um, through the through the buildings and and uh, the churn that takes place of, of uh, every 10 15 years new new arrivals uh, old uh, old people moving to the cemetery and young families moving in so all these questions i don't know if you have further observations on that on that question yeah, so uh, at, at least in, 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 in uh, the Netherlands, I think this is uh, somewhere documented. For example, the city of Den Haag, they uh, introduced uh, some uh, seven years ago a higher uh, tariff for the residential permit. And uh, half a year later, uh, I think 700 uh, households sold uh, one car, the second or the third, or sometimes the first car. So there is a quite clear relation between the policy you develop uh, on street. Uh, uh, that That's for, for sure. And then for the private, what we see now in Belgium at this moment is that there is a, no, an, uh, a supply that is higher than the demand. Huh? So that mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have to study it more in detail, and that's maybe a bridge to what uh, Raf will, will tell us. But uh, uh, yeah, because of the high standards that are still um, uh, yeah, ad uh, adopted by most of the municipalities, mm -hmm. uh, some developers uh, aren't able to, to, to sell uh, the parking mm -hmm. places. Yeah, yeah. And in Dutch, that sounds very nice. We say you you can't sell it to the to the cobblestones. Eh? You you krijgt het aan de straatsteen en niet verkocht. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's uh, but that's not where we want uh, the parking to be located. So um, so thank you, Dirk. Uh, I want to give one example um, before moving to uh, to Raf, city of Utrecht. They they just announced that they would uh, keep uh, people who. Uh, um, resubmit their permit because they are moving into a car free uh, lifestyle to keep the permit uh, suspended and not cancelled so that means that you the moment you would discover two three years uh, ahead that you do need an, a car or you want to return to to car ownership uh, that you actually can um, can can reinstate your permit because they have an, a system of waiting lists and and of, of uh, so that also helps to to test and experiment with new mobility behavior uh, without that you uh, lose all the rights uh, to give up too much rights so it's it's an, a flexible way of of uh, of working on on car free lifestyles and I, I think it's a very interesting idea that was also co created with citizens so there were citizens who came up with that concern that they they want to be car free but they don't want to end up at the end of an uh, of a waiting list when they would uh, when they see that the, the, the new behavior doesn't work for them. So, Raf, your story is a bit different. Eh? We, we, you have worked on the, uh, the reconversion of, of, uh, of uh, parking buildings. Um, I will give you, you the floor and um, you will present uh, from your own computer. So I will leave uh, the stage and I hope that everything works, works well. In the meantime, do... Um, do put uh, comments in the chat and uh, and in the q a because i feel a bit lost as an uh, as a moderator if i have to uh, come up with questions myself uh, so feel free to uh, to contribute there uh Raf, the floor is yours yep. thank you i think you can see the screen it's shared and i hope you can hear me if not evo will give me a sign i presume so good afternoon everybody from my side um, I will talk about 15 minutes, I think, um, on, on our research, adaptive reuse of underground car parks, which I did together with Martin van Acker at the University of Antwerp. Um, the main question we asked ourselves is what can be done with underground car parks um, in the assumption that, that we're not going to use them for parking cars anymore. Uh, specifically car parks located in public space 
and in, in the city centers were the subject of our, of our research. Um, the presentation will be divided in three parts. Firstly, as you can see on the left side of, of the slide, and an analysis, analysis of these spaces. Uh, next, the actual adaptive review spaces. And finally, I will reflect upon the previous. Um, these are some pictures of, of the underground spaces. The research was very photographical, so it's, it's a lot in, in images that we worked. Um, on these cave spaces specifically, uh, we can tell that the, the limitations, uh, the op of course, is the, the limited heights of, of two meters and, and the limited entrance of daylight, which leads to an unsafety perception. But the, the second limitation is maybe less common known, the load capacity of the intermediate floors, which is actually quite low at, at two kilonewton per square meter, whereas, for instance, a supermarket needs 10 kilonewton per square meter. So that limits the program that you can put in, in those spaces with limited um, interventions. On the other hand, the raw potential that we discovered is, is mainly um, the bunker characteristics of these spaces, uh, the capacity to buffer sounds and goods, temperatures and so on. And secondly, the, yeah, the specific topography, uh, namely below ground level, which yeah, creates opportunities for a city metabolism mm -hmm. to be integrated in these spaces. Mm -hmm. I think of water management or technical spaces for geothermal or vehicle to grid networks, etc. Uh, besides the actual cave spaces, we we have three other elements that, that constitute the, the car park, the underground car park. That's the surface, which is the roof of the car park, mainly um, developed as, as a public space, as squares in the cities. Um, the pavilion, which is the, yeah, the access for pedestrians to, to the car park um, with the, the payment um, yeah, services located and then the ramp which is the car use only access to the to the car park which seems to to be too steep for 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 instance uh, bicycle use which limits the the use with, with uh, limited um, interventions uh, another limitation is in the context we we work this is the flanders and the netherlands context with the high groundwater tables um, it turned out that for multi-level under car parks, they're very often um, foreseen with systems for lowering groundwater tables continuously, uh, drainage, which means not only during construction, but also during the entire lifespan of those parking spaces, there's a, a pumping of, of water. And the second, but that's maybe a bit technical for today, the Metodo Milano with walls to, to the, the clay layers, but they don't seem that watertight as foreseen in most cases. So there is also additional pumping and lowering the, the groundwater tables, which leads to ecological and stability imbalance in the neighborhood and limitations for residential uses. Then the actual yeah, adaptive reuse, we divided in three categories. First, the light interventions, which is kind of technical urbanism alike. Uh, secondly, the, the large interventions, which is on an architectural scale. And thirdly, more systemic uh, approach to integrate um, city metabolism in those spaces. Um, for the light interventions, you see some pictures of, of references or inspiration for those um, spaces. Uh, for instance, the, the, the obvious cycle uh, use as you see at the left on top, but the the box in box principle, for instance, where you can create um, yeah, spaces for, for instance, for the weekly market under the the usual marketplace, and at the right you see a, a ski facility, um, which isn't a, a former parking space, but it's it's a bit uh, yeah, the morphology of a, of a parking space you can see. Um, here you see at the left on top. A running track in, in a parking space like environment in, in Schiedam. At the right, you see um, a, a agricultural use in, in La Caverne in, in Paris, which is actually a transformation of, of a car park. And below, 
other um, references. I will not go deeper into them. Then what we did was um, we selected and, and collected a database of about 300 best practices of underground um, architecture and urbanism. And then we took it to the design studios with the master students of, of architecture, where we did a research by design on the case of Mechelen, where the students had one semester to, to work on, on these spaces. And, and the front at the uh, top of, of this slide, you see one of those um, designs where the, the students uh, connected the three car parks of the city center of Mechelen into one system, um, which, which is a distribution hub with, with cargo bikes uh, riding to, to the city from, from there. And below you see a shared mobility concept also with a light intervention integrated in, in those spaces. Um, the next um, category of adaptive reuse we, we looked at is the, the more architectural approach where we go to larger interventions where again we, we looked at, at underground um, yeah, architecture um, references for, for seeing how to enter light etc. You see some examples here and here for um, increasing the height of, of the cave spaces by more landscape design approaches which which served as as case studies for for our research and this is then um, a, a transformation of, of an underground car park we found in copenhagen at hauserplatz where today the the cleaning services of the city are located in a former um, yeah, underground car park which is a nice example a second one is in brussels it's actually the, the first underground car park of Belgium. It's uh, um, car park Albertina, built for the occasion of Expo 58. Um, so in, in 1957 and, and 58 built. Um, the green area you see that I marked on this slide is the underground space of, of that um, development. It was foreseen already from the start with an underground theater, as you see which was renovated in 2007 during the transformation of the car park to a congress center. So here you see the, the car park spaces which are uh, being transformed into this congress center about 10-15 years ago. Um, here you see the entrance of this congress center which um, leads us to a, a first reflection on on the use of these spaces because we are talking about um, really public spaces the, the square and and this entrance is when there's an activity in, in the congress center it's a landscape uh, stair in, in in the middle of, of a big square but when it's not used it's a, a not always but sometimes a, a desolated and and not accessible space which gives something to to think about um, deeper i think uh, this one I will skip because it's, it's a bit too architectural. Then for this architectural approach, we took it again to the to the studios with these, the, the students. And here they made from Parking Cathedral in Mechelen. Um, they integrated a columbarium and memorial spaces. This is next to the cathedral in, in Mechelen. So it, it used to be a cemetery before and, and it's a way to, to bring back these services into the, the heart of the city. So. This is specific on, on this one parking space. And then the third category we worked in was the systemic uh, approach to, to integrate city metabolism and, and mainly rainwater management into those spaces. Um, seeing their location below ground, ground level, it, it creates opportunities. And here you see some inspiration uh, images with the, of course, the, the Reservoir de Passy from the Paris uh, renovations in, in the 19th century where they capture rainwater to, to water the parks and to clean the streets. It's non-drinkable water for, for those um, uses, uses it. And then the, the second one on, on the right, it's in Rotterdam, the, the water square where they collect flood water during storms and, and when it's not used as, as a water bus it's it's a recreational space and two others that i will not go in in detail now 
Um, this is another inspiration for, it's a photo I took in Belgium from a, an industrial seat. It, it's not a parking space. It was an industrial seat and it's being transformed into a parking space. And it, it shows the, the unsealing of, of, or the potential unsealing of a parking space. Nice and then removing the roof to, to, to new uses. Then within this category of, of uh, met metabolism, the students made this um, design where they again connected the three um, parking spaces into a water system where you see at the right a, an almost copy um, yeah, of, of the, the Bentham's uh, Bentham plan in, in Rotterdam where you see at the, the recreation and, and, and the water storage combined in, in one car park and the second you see um, a geyser, which which would bring awareness to to the citizens on 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 the water cycles of, of of the city and so on. And there is also Google data centers in in the water and so on. So it's an entire system. And this one is maybe the, the most uh, drastic, which is a tabula rasa of the of the space and and creating a deepened urban park, tackling climate change and and loss of biodiversity on on a on a on a high degree. So this brings us to the, the reflections, which are um, yeah, categorized in two, two, yeah, two viewpoints, let's say. Firstly, the multidisciplinarity of this exercise. Um, the spaces turned out to be very complex urban spaces, as you've seen, it's engineering, it's infrastructure, architecture, landscape. So it's, it's a quite complex, um, yeah, exercise when 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 it's taught taught over. And the second um, issue here is the synergy of scales, which is important. As seen, for instance, uh, with the like the the water cycles, where you can create locally really nice public space, which serves the much larger scale of, of the city in in water problems. And then the second reflection is on a sociological point of view where because we are working specifically on, on public space uh, located um, car parks it's the the issue of, of interest agency and access because today you see the, the spaces are mostly on the contract practically all with concessions which go already up to 50 years with with private um, yeah parking operators and the use is, is car use only so for future users, we see this pressure of from a neoliberal discourse, the concessions on the one hand, and also the, the real estate value that these places have. So it will be a, a quite tough decision for policymakers to really choose for, for instance, city metabolism or inclusive spaces like a deep park and, and, and not go for the commercial and consumerism like um, approaches because the, the pressure and the, the the business model that that's that's behind it, it it's going to be yeah, one of, of the main pressures i think for the coming 20 years on these spaces which uh, the last sentence i wrote um, semi privatization of public space versus expanding uh, guinean public space uh, taking into account the the increasing housing densities in cities we should maybe take the opportunity to create more public space and not to to sell it or put it in concession because we're going to need more public space in cities in the future and not not less this leads me to my last slide so our question was what can be done with urban underground car parks and at the end of this um, yeah, research i think we ended up with the question what should be done with with these car parks so this leaves us uh, um, other research <laughs> material to to go deeper. I will leave it here. Um, thank you. Okay, thank you, Raf. And uh, I will ask you to green, and I will also invite Martina and Dirk back to the to the stage. Um, give them a, a second. Um, Dirk, you have, you have been also connected to, to Raf's research, no? You were 
in a jury or uh, wrong no or? not directly no, I okay i thought that so. was yeah. not in in the research team no ah, no 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 okay i thought you were somehow connected um but uh martina will you also join us yes um, sorry <laughs> Okay, welcome. That's, uh, I don't know if there's, uh, because there's uh, no action in the chat and in the, the Q&A, uh, so I still ask uh, my dearest uh, participants to, to uh, speak out if you have questions. Um, and um, in the meantime, I would like to first give the three speakers the opportunity to, to reflect or, on each other's presentation or to ask, uh, ask questions. And then I have prepared some, some further uh, discussions as well, uh, questions for discussion. I don't know if there's any immediate things you would like to know from Martina. Yes. Yeah, well, uh, I would comment on, on Raf's um, implication or um, about uh, your talk about the uh, public space. I think public space is really the key issue we are talking about because public space you can't double. It's sort of like it's it's about sort of like reusing it, about uh, coming up with a different sort of like um, who who is allowed to use and uh, the proportion what you give to pedestrians, what you give to cars, what to to cycle infrastructure. So it's about um, I think public space is one of the crucial parts. Yes, I think for, for specifically for those parking spaces, it, it started with with concessions because you have the uh, to take an example the the main square of Mechelen. It's the Grote Markt. It's, mm -hmm. it's the main public space, which was always public. At the moment that you create a parking, it starts the the underground level immediately with a concession. And now that you are stuck with the mm -hmm. it becomes this psychological uh, required right for for the municipality and, and they are used to to get a profit from it so they are not um they they, they see it as a, as a business model and not as when, when you try to to transform it to to a public space like like the, the square was but i mean in, in a second level underground I think it's going to be hard for them to to let go of the the profits they have known because it's it's a large part of the of city's budget that they, they gain by by using these spaces so i think that's really going to be an issue and there's going to be courage needed to really go for non-commercial um, yeah, uses of, of those spaces mm. I think it to, to add yeah. uh, yes maybe um a point for discussion is that uh, if we can continue or uh, should we continue uh, because the question was what should we do with these places uh, rough uh, but should we also continue with building a new underground parking uh, spaces so it was a, a common in in, in 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 belgium at least uh, uh, to yeah, to build them in on all main in 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 many cities on all main squares. Uh, to to you gave the example of of Mechelen. Uh, that was maybe an extreme example. Uh, but I think all public uh, uh, squares are, have now underground parking there. Should we continue, or should we orient uh, more on? Uh, yeah, let's say more temporary uh, constructions, uh, more flexible constructions, but this will not be underground then. Or, or is it still possible to have a, a flexible uh, uh, building of these uh, underground parks? What uh, is uh, this may be a point for discussion, also mm -hmm. maybe for Martina, more mm -hmm. in general. Yeah. yeah, I think I would like to react also that uh, the um, if you look at, at non-rail bound uh, parking because of course uh, there's a lot of parking uh, owned by by railway companies also in europe but the uh, the private uh, uh, parking uh, 
what they call they call themselves the G8 or the G6 or G10, depending on on how many companies you include. But many of them are owned by by long term investors, so the pension funds, um, and insurance uh, companies or reinsurers. So the idea to these are investments that are in for the the long win and the long term um, profit. So that is uh, going up to 40, 50, 60 years. And also the, the, the times that Raf has mentioned in terms of concessions. So there is a very big financial um, uh, financial interest um, that goes quite deep in the, in the economic system, uh, which is more than the city who claims a bit of, of money from an, an uh, reclaims on a concession. So there are very substantial um, uh, um, interests that, that play here. And if we look at, for instance, the timelines for uh, urbanization or also shrinking in certain shrinking cities in certain uh, locations, if we look at um, uh, mobility trends or the ones that we want in terms of modal shift, in terms of uh, automation, for instance, shared mobility, uh, electromobility, um, uh, the uh, the, these timelines start to coincide. Eh? So the idea that you, I, the idea that you build now for 40, 50 years and, and try to put in concrete, in the literal, in the literal sense of the word, in concrete, the mobility behavior of an entire city, that starts to become very um, problematic, and there is a risk, uh, a risk for the investors and the, a risk for the the, uh, the economic. Um, uh, actors that are linked to these this uh, infrastructure so that's that's quite a fundamental discussion i think uh, and which is a bit different of course martina than your story about uh, and and Dirk's story about uh, the the individual household or the the uh, the build the city block who needs parking for its own residents um, so martina yes yeah, oh, um, yeah, okay. Um, I, I think um, w what's important is in, in, in Germany, and I, I guess it was at least uh, in Belgium the same situation, that on-street parking was less expensive than off-street parking. And so um, I guess, al although, um, and uh, Rotterdam changed that, uh, they make uh, on-street parking extremely e expensive and subsidize off-street parking. Off-street parking is usually more expensive because with sort of like the reinvest, as uh, uh, Ivo said, uh, you come up with higher costs. But th that's the way um, Rotterdam is doing. And I wonder how this is done in, in other Belgium cities, that you sort of like the city says, make on-street parking very expensive and subsidize off-street parking. Yeah, in, in, in Belgium, uh, I showed you uh, a table. Huh? So uh, on-street parking, especially for uh, residential permits, permits is extremely uh, uh, low. Low. Uh, the cost is extremely yes. low. Yes, in uh, Germany, the same. Zero, huh? Though, for example, I showed you the example of Antwerp, where uh, you have two permits per household for free. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the policy of the city, uh, they call it uh, put, so parkeren of eigen terrain, so parking on uh, private ter terrain. And so the, the policy is to, to shift from uh, on-street parking towards uh, private. The official policy, what is happening now is that the supply on private is, uh, is becoming uh, higher, so there is a, a high uh, parking standard, minimum standard also. Uh, but on the other hand, the number of parking places on the public uh, squares is uh, uh, almost the same for 10 years now. So mm -hmm. that, that's a, uh, indeed not a consistent policy. Mm -hmm. So it, it depends a little bit on, um, on different cities, but in general, um, on-street parking is extremely cheap. Mm -hmm. Same Compared to, for yeah. example, uh, the Dutch and, and also 
more and more the German uh, tariffs. I think the, the other way uh, that um, that Belgian cities or other cities also try to influence the uh, uh, the private off-street uh, price setting is the uh, to to be present in the sector as an as a public off-street parking provider. So mm -hmm. the idea that you you have a market share that is sufficiently big to start to uh, to undercut the prices of the private sector and try to in this way try to to reduce the prices in the entire okay. system for off street parking if you like in ghent i think and in other locations uh, you have you have a mix of, of public and private uh, there it's more only public i think but yeah so you you try to be present in the market as an authority, as, a, as the city. Um, and if you have a, a certain share of off-street parking spaces that you offer at a cheap rate, the, the private providers will have to follow uh, in the same rate. But but then you are again in, an, in a logic of, um, of, of an increased number of, of, of spaces, and it doesn't really help to, to reduce uh, to reduce the number of uh, of spaces, I would like to uh, turn to my um, to to a question that I also had put forward uh, before uh, in in writing to you. Uh, three is the question of who are the principal um, the principal uh, agents in this uh, story. Yeah? So the um, in a lot of the the presentations we we hear like okay it's the local government the local authority the city who will be the initiator of such a, a project who also has the regulatory tools um we heard from Dirk also the fact that that individuals don't want to buy parking spaces anymore because it's <laughs> they don't need it or they don't want it in the numbers that that it was was foreseen in the in the building permits um so there are also the, the developers, the concession holders. So there's a number of, of uh, stakeholders, shareholders around the table. Um, but in your stories, I hear that it's the city who, who takes the lead. Is that so? Is that realistic? Are they equipped? Uh, can you maybe um, reflect a bit on, on that side? Are, are we looking at the right uh, actor for, for this? I don't know who wants to go first. On, on yeah. this. Martina. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, parking standards are sort of like uh, it's the issue of a city. Um, they deal. Uh, they have to sort of uh, have. Uh, they have to come up with the regulation on that. Um, the problem is that if um, it comes from the mobility sector. Um, or, or the transport sector, they are happy with a low um, uh, low parking norm or low uh, parking standards. But the building sector, the building people in in a city, they want to have a high um, high parking standards because they fear uh, that the 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 apartments in the long run and all the others uh, um, uh, will uh, can't be sold or can't be rented because no parking space is available, and so the city doesn't speak with one language or with one uh, how you say uh, with one uh, tongue. Um, yeah, it's sort of like it depends on the department in in a city. Yes, in, in Belgium, it's obviously it's, it's the, the let's say the municipalities, the cities. But maybe that was somewhat that was not uh, developed uh, yeah, very explicitly until now. But of course, there is apart from the cities, there are also rural towns and so on. And, and maybe the discussion is a little bit different there. Uh, but it is clearly the municipalities, though maybe in uh, in Flanders it may evolve to the to the transport regions. There are now some uh, uh, 13 uh, regions uh, where they have to organize the public transport, but they are more in general now dealing with mobility issues. And there is an example that is uh, shared now in, in these, uh, let's say, in, in these regions, uh, the example of uh, Ile de France, in, in, uh, so the region around Paris where they developed already 10 years ago uh, 
parking uh, policy and, and parking standards for the whole of the region. And the municipalities had to follow this uh, standard. Uh, there was uh, there is a kind of political board on the level of the region, and then the municipalities have to fit this uh, regional approach. This is under discussion now, but at this moment, it is the uh, for for sure it is the municipalities. But of course, there is and and also so we we presented this paper. We are in discussion with the organization of the of the municipalities of the local authorities in 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 Flanders. Uh, yeah, many people of indeed the mobility services they agree with the need of these uh, uh, lower standards and and maybe also maximum standards to to this uh, broader mobility approach. Uh, but of course, in, in practice, there is a lot of discussion going on. So most of the cities, uh, in most of the cities, the parking standards are under revision, are in revision, uh, and and the trend is to have to lower them, uh, or that is the debate. And but there is also a lot of pressure by the developers by the fact that uh, what uh, Ivo said, it, they are not able to. To sell them anymore, um, uh, so there is a lot of pressure by the developers. So this also, uh, so the mobility services uh, developers are more or less in the same uh, line. Now. After you have uh, you talked about the complexity of the projects that you you have in in who have in mind eh, with with different sectors uh, mm -hmm. coming around the table, um, how how would that be coordinated and uh, a tsar for uh, you say in the in the in in English you call that a tsar and uh, a person who takes the lead on these uh, on these on these uh, big projects. I don't know how you would. Would see that, and is that an, an a city representative or an, a neutral person? Um, yeah, for the moment, I think the yeah the actors are, are the the city themselves and, and the concession holders. But when you go to, for instance, the metabolism integration in these spaces, I think you should go on a, on a larger level to to the region, because now you see. From a city branding approach of all these cities, they want to attract cars to their shopping centers, and there's not yeah, a vision on, on a more regional scale. But I think there could be, um, but it's improvising at the moment. So for, for me now, I, I will say because I haven't really done research on this, but I think maybe when you take it to a, a higher level for from the region, let's say that there could be more. The yeah, vision for yeah, for a larger scale than just this city scale, mm. especially for these these yeah, city centered car parks. Because what we did was really about the city centered car parks, not on on the peripheral uh, side of, of the city. It's really attracting cars to the heart of the city today, and then something that, that I think we should not aim for anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, very interesting. I will uh, I will end with the uh, the last question uh, before we close, and and that's a question to the three of you. When when people uh, leave their desks in a minute uh, after this session, so what what is the the first what are the first steps in a process to to reach the change that you you have suggested in your in your presentations? What are or what are the mistakes that need to the first mistakes that need to be undone uh, to to create that that uh, that change? Um, the um, because it's in all of the uh, stories, there are there's an, an, a connected network of solutions that that can take take shape. So what could be a first uh, a first step? And who is ready to answer that complex question? Yeah. I would like to start. Or... Yeah, good, rough. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, I think for the underground car parks, it would be a, a good first step. Would be temporal uh, uses, I think, and and pilot projects in those spaces to create awareness of what could be possible, so that you you can get more people involved. Because at the moment, it's really minds or it's it's a business model of 
of making money from from a parking business and when you see that you can do and it can start with like like market spaces underground or cycling courses in those spaces for for people learning to cycle or, or even a roller skating event just to bring people to those spaces and then make make them aware of, of, of that it could be more than just these spaces and not immediately into a commercial circuit mm -hmm. i think yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think there is an uh, an opportunity. Yeah? I've heard uh, several commercial uh, parking providers uh, when they talk to each other, when there still were coffee breaks, they they are very open on on the fact that certain locations for them are actually too big, uh, that the concessions are not uh, rewarding enough because there's the the space provided is is just too um, is, is is designed for peak moments mm -hmm. that are that are not. Uh, uh, seldom you seldomly reached so um uh that's a good a good idea um martina or dirk uh, you want to I, yeah um uh i think it would be a good uh, idea that uh parking your own car um as far as the next public transport station or as far as um, um, yeah, the next uh, mobility hub, whatever. So the problem is that the car usually is too close to um, the home. And so people, the, they step out of their house and the first thing they bump into is the car. It's, they need it needs more effort to get your bicycle from the shade in the backyard to put on the street and start cycling and so um, I think it would be most helpful if sort of um, yeah if if the distance to the car would be as long as to all other uh, um, means of transportation. No, with means no, like like yeah centralized parking in in neighborhoods for instance or like the umea example you gave where you have grouped parking for a neighborhood uh, that that brings of course in a, a bigger yeah. resistance to um to yeah. immediate uh, yeah. And that's what is done in in Vienna, in Aspen, in um, in most cities where you have new residential area that you have centralized parking, mm -hmm. and so you can decide: do I go to my car or do I use public transport? Then sort yeah. of, it's the same distance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's also, and but that's an, another discussion uh, that we are also uh, starting in police. That that also is the our, our biggest uh, objection against uh, policies in electromobility, where the the charging infrastructure follows the the demand in the car. So the the idea that you, the moment you 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 buy a car, you could an electric car, you could actually uh, require or or have have start a process of, of installing charging infrastructure in front of your door uh, that's the kind of, of solutions we don't uh, we don't want to see uh, lock in public space for the next uh, 10 10 15 years uh, Dirk you have the final word yes yes, yeah. yes sorry so yeah it refers also to what Martina was saying I think you have uh, when you have uh, uh, an issue on uh, uh, a, a new building project you have to to broaden up uh, your uh, your approach so open open up uh, as well the scale and martina was also referring to it so not don't try to find uh, a solution at uh, for sure not at the level of an individual building of house or apartment but on on, on a more on a neighborhood scale of course, opening also the the scope um, in a multimodal way and not only looking at cars, and also so it's the in and out. So also maybe opening new facilities for a neighborhood for other use, and this will also influence uh, the way you're building it. So the entrance should be public in, 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 uh, and not only uh, for the residents so it, it and also if you make it more adaptive uh, the management of, of such a building will also maybe be more uh, complex uh, if you want to follow maybe a, a model shift and, and have 
maybe in 10 years uh, more place for for cycling or for uh, shared mobility and less for individual cars uh, what about uh, let's say the management of such a building so um, mm -hmm. yeah it, it, I, and and there also the question is what will be the role of of, of the municipality uh, in in what way it, it, it will be involved in in such processes mm -hmm. yeah okay there's uh just in, in i say that uh, just in time delivery of an uh of an uh, of an a comment by Riette Sonnenberg, who says, "Yeah, okay, we talked a lot about the, the mobility aspect of, of the the standards and the, um, the the how the 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 change of, of uh, approaching uh, numbers of, of parking locations uh, spaces would would influence mobility, but there is this." Uh, that's actually the, the whole world of, of public space that, that uh, I think we, we try to address, but in, in it could have been a bit more in the, in the picture. Um, I, yeah, I don't know if there are immediate uh, reactions to that, so otherwise we, we close the session, but thank you, Riette, for, uh, for that, that valuable comment. Um, and uh, Paul also thanks us. Thank you, Paul. I would have liked it even more if you would have asked a question paul but that's for the next time then okay um so raf dirik and martina uh ah, he's too shy yeah uh thank you very much uh, for for your your input i hope really we can continue this discussion uh in the future because this is uh this is a very essential um essential discussion that needs to be held in parallel with the uh the discussion on respacing uh, the, the the street space, um, and uh, I think we uh, we are in in good company to to do to do so to keep that uh, discussion open. Um, thank you, and I hope to see you in other sessions here at uh, Urbanism Next. Goodbye. <laughs>